Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dino. Nice to see you here this morning. You have Jan? Yes. I got it right this time. And of course, Parker. Okay, um, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about. Anybody guess? You want to guess what I'm going to talk about today? Script. No. <laughs> Follow up. Today, I'm talking about time. Now, time means different things to different people. Okay? So, Parker, if I said time to you, what does that mean to you? Um, tick tock, tick tock, yeah. tick tock. Du, 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 That's hard du, to describe. Du, du, du. Okay, all right. Devion. A, time. Va a valuable possession. Okay, all right. Okay. Dino. Time, money. Time equals money. Time equals money, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about time from people's different perspectives, okay? Because essentially in the world, there are two kinds of people, okay? There are what I call the workers, You know, this is where you work for somebody else, okay? And it could be as simple as being the counter person at McDonald's. It could be being a host at the MGM, okay, right? And you're a worker and you're paid for your time, right? And being a worker, it's finite. And what I mean by that is, there's only so much time you can put in. I mean, even if you worked 168 hours, because that's how many hours there are in a week, without eating, without sleeping, without anything, that's still a finite amount of time. Now, you might qualify for overtime, double overtime, triple overtime, but the bottom line is, is that it's finite. Okay? Then you have the entrepreneur, or self-employed. Person, okay? Now, one of the things that Davion said, which was very accurate, is that it's, uh, you said it was precious, right? Yes. Okay, it's a precious commodity. So let's talk about time for just a minute. How many people are in the, in the world? Seven billion. Seven billion. Billions and billions of people. So people, unlimited supply, unlimited. Unlimited people. Could you hire all the people in the world and put them on the payroll? No. I think Jeff Bezos now is the richest man in America from Amazon. I was reading over the weekend. He couldn't afford to employ every single person. Although he's the richest man in the world. But there's an unlimited number of people. Okay, it's not about money. How much money in the world? Unlimited. And you know what? I don't know if anybody really knows how much money there is, right? Trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, okay? So people, money, unlimited, unlimited. Time, how many hours in a day? 24. 24. Limited. Once today has gone by, once this morning has gone by, can I get that back? No. Okay. When the airplane leaves the airport with an empty seat, okay, 
Can they sell that seed? Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. So the most precious commodity we have is time. Time. And yet so many people fuck around with their time. Watch television. And what was really interesting, I was looking at my Facebook feed yesterday, and there's all these people, I don't know why things become fashionable on Facebook, right? There's all these people complaining about how much of their personal private information Facebook has. And I'm thinking, you're a dumb shit. Because the only reason that Facebook has all this private personal information on you is because you put it there. <coughs> the other thing everybody was complaining about, <coughs> excuse me, was how much time they were putting into Facebook. Who controls your time? You. You do. So when somebody says to me, I wish I had more time to read, what does that really mean? They don't want to read. They don't want to read because if reading became a priority, right, they would read. <coughs> so let's go back to the concept of time because, <coughs> sorry, everyone in this room is self-employed. Okay? Worker, finite. There's even certain activities. Let me get a white bee. There's even certain activities that even if we're entrepreneurs or self-employed, okay, we're still restricted by time. Dentist. Right? I can have a dental practice and I can have eight or nine chairs going at the same time with hygienists doing their thing, x-rays being taken. But for me to go see every patient, right, I, can only, I only have so much time. There's only so much time unless I take on other dentists as partners that I can have even to, to you know, work with my practice. And then I open up other offices and so on and so forth, okay? So there are certain jobs, brain surgeon, okay? I mean, how many people can conduct, if you're the brain surgeon, how many people can conduct brain surgery, right? Only you. Now, you might be, they might open the guy up, right, and have somebody else to close the guy up. But once you're there, you're the guy actually doing the brain surgery. So even there, you're restricted by a finite amount of time, okay? What's very cool about what we do in real estate, okay, is that to a certain extent, in terms of the amount of money we can make, we're not limited by time. Or so we think. Though actually we are. But time affects us in a different way. And I'm going to explain it in the following manner. So we have entrepreneurs self-employed, right? I'm not going to go into the worker side. I mean, we both know. I mean, how much money can you make as a worker? I was talking to a gal the other day. Her husband's a welder. And, he, and oh, oh my God, he makes really good money. Or what does he make? Forty dollars an hour. Really? That's sixteen hundred a week. What the fuck? I got shoes worth double that. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, but everything's relative. Okay. As a real estate agent, you do one deal. What's your average commission? Six thousand dollars, right? One deal, six thousand dollars. So we know people have limited, money unlimited, time is limited. Six thousand dollars. How much time did you put into that deal? Really? Four or five hours. Yeah, into one deal. Now you might put time into five other deals, <coughs> and nothing happens. Okay? But let's talk about time and how it affects us as the entrepreneur. Now, if I'm a worker, if I'm a worker, I am. I know that every Friday, or the first of the fifteenth, or the fifth of the twentieth, wherever may my employer chooses to pay me, I'm going to make money, right? So I know come Friday, I got a guaranteed check, 
as an entrepreneur, you don't have that luxury. Because as an entrepreneur, you create your own check, right? You create your own job description, okay? So for us, it's actually even worse. Where did I put my pens? Oh, in my pocket. As an entrepreneur, <laughs> let's use blue. <laughs> as an entrepreneur, time is even more important. And let me explain something to you, okay? So let's take Tropicana, right? Tropicana is the street in front of us, okay? So this is time. So Devion, if I put you outside of the street, okay, and I said to you, I want you to count, <coughs> there's lots of wet cars in Las Vegas, right? Okay. Yeah. I want you to count black cars. And um, do you think in the next, no, no, I want you to count green cars. That's even more rare, right? So I want you to count green cars. Do you think in the next hour, 10 green cars will be passing by our office building? 10, yes. Maybe, okay, right? Maybe, but even if it was the next hour, maybe in two hours, or maybe in three hours, definitely by the end of the day, right? Yes. Okay, I call that the outside factor. Because you don't control how many green cars drive by, unless you know a lot of friends with green cars. Hey guys, drive by, <laughs> okay, right? This is called the outside factor. Now we're in sales, we're in real estate, Currently, it's highly competitive, right? There's lots of people looking for deals. <coughs> lots of people making offers on deals. Lots of people following up on agents on deals, okay? So it's a very competitive climate. There's not one of me out there, there's a hundred, right? There's a thousands of you, okay? I mean, I mean, I know just on my own, off the top of my head, at least 30, 40 investors here in Las Vegas who compete against me looking for product, right? And they have how many agents working for them looking for product? Everybody's looking for product. Even in this office, ourselves, we compete against each other. And sometimes I'm putting offers out on deals you're putting offers out, which we need to fix, okay? But that's something else. But what I'm saying is a highly competitive environment. Okay, so we know that as we travel through time, the expected probability of an outside factor affecting our deal increases, right? So let's say I'm an agent and I post a super hot deal at seven o'clock Friday morning. I see the deal at 7.05. I call the agent up. By 7.15, how many more calls do you think he would have had? Maybe one or two, maybe none, okay? So that's 7.15 in the morning. How about 7.15 at night? Another 900. Yeah. So this is where time is your enemy, okay? Sometimes I've caught deals where the eight, like one minute it was active and the next minute because the agent had 18 offers, they put it in T status, like temporary hold, because they wanted to stop the flow of offers, which is actually crazy. They're not doing the seller any, anything, okay? They're just helping to sell, you know, almost maybe saving themselves some time or whatever, I don't know. Okay, but what I'm saying to you is that when we find a deal and I say write an offer, I don't mean write the offer at 7.15 at night or at noon or one o'clock. I mean write the offer right now. Right now this very second. Because we know as time progresses, here's time, the expected probability of an outside factor coming up increases exponentially. And instead of one or two guys 
it's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? And I'm sure you've all sold stuff on Craigslist. You only ever remember the first person you speak to or the last person you speak to or somebody else who made a distinctive impression somewhere along the line. That's why we have the script. That's why we try and separate ourselves from the rest of the crowd. That's why we tell them we're going to walk the property right now, this very second. Will you be available once I walk the property? Okay, we have all those different elements in there. Largest cash buyer, blah, 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 blah. Get you the um, offer out today. What can you tell me? What can you not tell me? Okay, we try and separate ourselves from the herd. But nevertheless, you have to jump out. You gotta go look at the property. You gotta put a videotape of the property up, okay? You gotta call the agent from the property. Hey, I'm here at the property. I'm noticing this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, is what's going on, okay? I can see that if your owner were to go conventional route and have an inspection, you know, they're gonna be out of pocket six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars to fix this stuff because a regular citizen, you know, home buyer ready to move in is not gonna buy the house the way it is. They're gonna make your seller make some repairs. Okay, you plant those seeds, okay? So we'll remember, so when you send them the thing, well, it's a low ball offer, it's not a low ball offer. Our offer is a, is a direct reflection of the market condition, okay, and the condition of the home. Okay, if your home was a 10 out of 10, absolutely top dollar. But it's not a 10 out of 10. As I explained to you earlier when I was there, that I saw easily six to ten thousand dollars worth of repairs that a regular citizen would make to make it a habitable for themselves. Okay, that they would expect the seller to pay. These are all these things you're reinforcing. But this time thing is really critical. Because what's gonna happen? How do you know? Maybe Enzo from Precision Assets who's one of our competitors, is out with his family today. Although I don't know if he ever takes a day off. Okay. But what happens if you take your time putting the offer out? What happens if you take your time going to look at the property and instead of wrapping everything up today, you wait until tomorrow? It's too late. Might be too late. Might, no. I guarantee you'd be too late. Because that motherfucker pays more than anybody. I don't know why or how. As it does? Oh, oh my God. I had a deal. I had a crappy floor. He comes in. We had it on the contract. We dropped the price on the guy. The guy dropped the price. Then we asked for another price drop. He wouldn't do it. And then Enzo came in and came in at 10 grand more than we did. Yeah. And got the deal. Okay, they do volume. Okay? And that's because we didn't wrap the deal up quickly enough. Okay? So you're always going to have, I mean, until, until you get it accepted, until you get that deal accepted, okay, anybody can, and an escrow with EMD in, you know, anybody can come along and beat the shit out of you and take your lunch, okay? So I become very concerned when I get up at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning, whatever the hell it is, and I start punching out offers, <coughs> I mean, even yesterday afternoon, I stopped at the end of the day, and I punched out a few more offers, okay? And then I, here I come now, it's Friday morning, you know, 12, 14, 15 hours later, and the offers aren't punched out. They're not done. I haven't even written up, okay? I get upset when we don't follow up on offers that we have out there. Because it's all about timing. You know, and, and as far as I'm concerned, is let me ask you a question. If the property is still active, what does that mean? Still for sale. That's right. This guy gets it. Still for sale. Okay? What we haven't done is we haven't come to terms with the seller. That's all. Okay? I don't care if the agent says the customer wants lists. I want to win the lottery, but does it really happen? Okay. We have a, we have a deal, Vantana, that the agent came back last week with a counter at 310000 and it's an out-of-state owner. And the agent said, 
a view counter at below 310, forget about it, yada, 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 yada. So we took the 310. I tried to shop at the investors, couldn't find anybody to take it at 310. The house is a nice house, it's a clean rental, in, out, two weeks, doesn't need too much work. I show an ARV of around 379 to 389, but even at 310 it's kind of skinny because of the size of the deal. We don't, we don't, we don't send an EMD, we cancel the deal. The seller gets all upset, pissed off, I think Monday or Tuesday, right? Ba 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 ba. Cancel so late. Ba 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 ba. Guess what they said yesterday? Do you think it would work at 305? What the fuck, really? Okay? After bitching, after saying 310's the absolute number, don't waste my time, right? So when we took the 310, who sold who? They just sold you. They sold us, yes. Yes. Okay? But we didn't have the temerity. We didn't have the balls to tell them no. Okay? And then we kick it back. Can't do it. Have to get their hopes up. And they're thinking, oh, maybe we'll just get another five. So now, now we're at 305. Where do you think we could go? 295. Maybe. 295, babe. Okay. So all of this, these roadblocks, right? Or these, we can't go less than this number or whatever. It's all in your head. It's nowhere else's, you know? Let's knock on the door and see what happens. What's the worst they can do to us? Fuck off. Right? What's the best they can do? Yes. You know, I had a 300 grand deal. It was a $9,000 commission, really? Okay? But we need to do this in a timely manner. You know, I mean... I'm somewhat concerned because I wasn't here Monday, right? But I've been here every day since then. And it seems to me that no one's been working. Well, when I say nobody, you guys have been. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about everybody else. So I'm, I, I'm looking at this board. There's 10 people here. Okay? If this was a regular business enterprise, where would these 10 people be right now? They would be here right now. They would be here right now. Okay? Which means they're not treating it like a job. Okay, and when they don't treat it like a job, it means they're not going to make any money. And because of the highly competitive nature of the business we're in right now, this type of behavior was adequate three years ago, right? But now because of the highly competitive nature of what we're doing, okay, this now is killing us. Fine. We're getting deals because we're a dollar short and a day late. Okay, so one of the things I want you guys to be absolutely really aware of is the time component and strike while the iron's hot. Okay, and even when you're on the phone with the agent, look, let's, let's wrap this up today. Let's not waste another day. Okay, if you and I can come to terms, but let's let you and I agree, okay, then we'll come up with a number that your seller is going to be happy with by the end of the day. Get it wrapped up, get it on the contract so we can both put this deal behind us and move on to the next deal. How about that? You plant the seed. Your job is to sell the seller's agent. Your job is not to sell them on 121. Your job is to sell them on you, right? On the willingness of getting this deal done. Your job is to sell them on convincing the seller where they need to be. Because the sellers don't have a clue. And sellers will, generally speaking, do whatever the agent tells them to do, as long as it's in a convincing, logical manner. Okay? All right? Unless sometimes we do have this, or the listing agent agrees with us that the seller is being obnoxious or the seller is being, you know, unreasonable. They're fishing, in other words, in terms of the price point, and there's nothing they can do. And sometimes they voice their own frustration to us as well. And then that begs my question to them is, then why did you take the listing? Because really right now, you're talking to me for free. No one's paying you, right? The whole idea is when I'm talking to somebody, is somebody out there is going to be paying me for that conversation, okay?
okay, why am I having the conversation not getting paid? Because that means it's not a very good use of my time. Okay, so what I need you guys to do is really look at time, look at the use of your time. We had the conversation on Monday morning about putting a schedule together. What's your daily schedule? I got one daily schedule email to me, that was it. Nobody else, okay? So that again lets me think, well, do, are, guys, are you guys really serious about doing this? Or is everybody just saying, yeah, this sounds kind of cool, let's, let's do it, okay? Right, because, because really and truly, right now, I'm writing less deals with sending deals out to six, seven, eight, nine people than I was with one agent. So I might just go back to two guys, three guys, that, who fucking work for me, who come in every day at seven o'clock, punch the deals out, go and look at the properties and do what I ask them to do, as opposed to 10. Because it's not working with 10. Okay, I'm writing less deals. Make sense? Okay, but the one thing today that I'm trying to get the point across to you is time is your enemy. Okay, time is your enemy. The more you let time go by, the greater the expected probability of an unknown event from taking place. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know? Like, you delay signing a contract. Because, you know, sometimes you're there, you know I can make the guy sign. Oh, it's okay, I'll be easy. Blah, 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 I'll come back the next day. Then his brother-in-law calls him from Virginia, who's a real estate agent. Oh, man, you can get more than 200 grand for your house. I was talking to my brother-in-law yesterday, and he said he'll even come out here and help me sell my house. If you know what I'm saying? And you go, shit. I could have signed the guy up yesterday, right? Because that's the outside factor of time. So keep that into consideration. Okay, guys, um, you and I went through all your deals. Do you know when you get a chance, let's go through your deals too. All right, cool, all right, let's go Friday.